Hello everybody and welcome back to Maths Miss Buick. In this video we're focusing on hypothesis testing for a population mean and you'll find this within inferential statistics. So let's begin the video by understanding what is a hypothesis test. So a hypothesis test is proving the truth or otherwise of the statement. So in your Leaving Cert exam you'll be given a statement and you have to say whether it is true or it is not true or has it changed or whether maybe it may not have changed. So there are four steps involved in a hypothesis test for a population mean and I have them labelled here and we're going to go through them. So you begin by stating what is your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis. So these will be brand new words to you but in the exam you don't really write down the English format we write down h0 and h1. So they're both statements and their sentences. So let's give an example of this. So we might have a statement saying that a coin was flipped in total 10 times and a head appeared five times. Well, if the head appeared five times, that means the tail must have appeared also five times. So we could say that the null hypothesis is that the coin is not biased because a head and a tail appeared an equal number of times. And the alternative is the complete opposite of the null where we would say that the coin is in fact biased. And you would have to prove then in your question whether you're going to keep the null or you're going to go for the alternative instead. And you do that by finding what we call a Z value. So uh, part two then, you state the significance level alpha, which is 0 0.05. Now, you do not need to worry about this step because in your Leaving Cert exam, alpha is always in the question and they say to you it's 5%. However, you actually don't do anything with this 5%. It's just within the question. Part three, this is where you get to the calculation and you have to know that you need to go to your log tables to find this formula for a hypothesis test for a population mean. So it's in the log tables, you just have to know that it is there. So you can see here that there are four different variables and we must understand what they are. So Z bar is your sample mean and your mu, that would be a new word to a lot of you, your mu is your population mean. So what are the differences between this x bar and this mu? Because they're both means. Well, let's go give an example of this. Let's say we have 100 cows in a field and we'll say that they produce on average five litres of milk each. So this would be our mu. This is our population mean because we have a population of 100 cows. So our mu will be, in this case, five litres. But let's say we the farmer decides to take maybe 30 of these 100 cows and put them into a different field. Well, they may have a different average number of litres of milk they produce. And this is your X bar. So the X bar is the sample mean. So this is the cows we took out. So we took out the 30 cows. Or sigma then is our standard deviation, so how far away we are from our mean. And then our n is our sample size. So the number of, in this case, our cow, our cow example, n will be 100 because of the 100 cows. So when we find the z value, we then have to look at two numbers. And these numbers you have to learn off, they're really, really important. So if your z value is less than minus 1.96, or if your z value is greater than 1.96, you reject the null, so you reject the h0 and you accept the alternative. So in other words, whatever you said for the null, well that in case is not true and you accept the alternative, which in this case is true. So let's have an, look at a good example of this. So here we go. Mice are kept under laboratory conditions and have a mean lifespan of 258 days and a standard deviation of 45 days. 64 mice were given a dose of a certain drug and the mean lifespan for this group was now 269 days. At the 5% level of significance, and of course this is our alpha, which I told you you don't have to worry about because it's in the question, as you can see. Um, is there evidence that the drug has altered the mean lifespan of the mice? So let's begin this question by writing down what is our H0 and our H1. So our H0 and our H1. So the H0 is the null hypothesis. So we start off and we say, well, what was the original lifespan of these mice? That will be our null. And we can see it's 258 days from up here. So let's write down 258 days. Well, the alternative is the complete opposite of this. 
In other words, it's, it's not 2 and 58 days. It's a different number of days. But of course, we don't know what that different number of days will be. It may not be 269. It could be a different number. So in this case, we always say not equal to 258 days. So the first tip I will give you is... These numbers will always be the same, except the first one will be equal, the second one will be not equal. So that's step number one done. Next of all, we're going to work out what is our Z. So Z is equal to X bar minus mu sigma all over root n. Now I know this off, but again, it's in the log tables. So our X bar is our sample mean. So we have to see what mice were taken out. So in this case, there were 64 mice taken out of the number originally of the number of mice in the lab. And their mean, will be, let's have a look down here, it was 269. So again, our X bar is our sample mean. It's the mice that were taken out to be looked at. So that's 269 minus our mu. This is, I suppose, the mean of the population. So the original mean of all of them together, all of the mice. And it says here that the mice are kept under allergy conditions have a mean lifespan of 258. So that's 258. All over sigma, which is our standard deviation. So let's find that in the question. Here we go, 45. All over our root n. And of course we have 64 mice which was over here. Next of all, we're going to go to our calculator and we'll type it in exactly as we see it. So 269 minus 258 all over 45 all over root 64. So you can see here, I typed it in exactly as I have it over there. Press the equals button and then press the SD button and we get Z is 1.95. So here we go, 1.95. Now we have to work out whether we're going to reject or null and accept our alternative, or it could be the opposite way around. And of course, this is known by remembering our key numbers in this question. So this is part three. So we said that if Z is less than minus 1.96, or if Z is greater than 1.96, we reject the null and accept the alternative. So learn that off you reject the null and accept the alternative if your Z is outside these numbers. And you can see here that we got Z to be 1.95. So it's within its skin of its teeth within this here. So it's just a tiny, teeny bit smaller than 1.96. So in this case, we are not going to reject our null. So we'll write down, so part four, we'll say, accept the null, as 1.95 is less than 1.96. And we'll say that the mean number of days is 258. So there we go. So just to recap again, it's very important that you remember that this formula is in the log tables. You get a value for Z. Then you see, is your Z value bigger or smaller than these numbers here, which you need to learn off. I can't stress that enough. Learn those off. And then you can write down whether the statement is going to be accepting the null or rejecting the null.